Welcome to part one of retouching an editorial headshot. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us all up on Twitter and Facebook at Flurn. And uh, today we're doing part one of our editorial headshot. This is uh, Asa Davis who actually uh, edits the video here at Flurn, so he'll be editing <laughs> this video. We're gonna do some really, really cool stuff. I wanted to do a multiple part series because there's so many things you can learn about editing and retouching a headshot that are just gonna come in really, really handy for just about whatever you do. So today, we're starting it off with some really cool things. I'm gonna make a custom brush and then we're gonna use that to retouch skin. I'm gonna show you how to create some really great skin without looking like too Photoshoppy or too retouched and uh, we're gonna be applying it directly onto uh, Asa. So it's really, really cool. Let's go ahead and get into it. So this is our portrait. This is basically straight out of camera and uh, it looks great. I, uh, I really like this portrait. Super natural and uh, just all around a good image. So the first thing I want to do is kind of like take a look at skin and do some retouching. Now, especially with men in, in particular, I usually don't do a ton of retouching, but there are some things that um, I think maybe we could uh, gain from this image. So I want to create a custom brush. And the reason I do is because I, I want to do skin retouching, but I still want to be able to add texture as I retouch. And uh, not something that I do all the time, but in this case, I think it's just going to be fun. So that's why I'm going to do it, because I think it's going to be fun. So to make a custom brush, let's hit Command N, and I'm just gonna make this like 800 pixels by 800 pixels. This will be a nice big brush uh, for use on retouching images like this, which are, have a, a pretty large, um, you know, it's a 20 megapixel image, so a, a big brush is good for that. Now, I'm gonna right click, and uh, Photoshop lo comes loaded with a bunch of these other, like totally random brushes. If you don't see any, you can go over here, uh, this little gear here, click there. Let's bring this over here. Okay, and then you can go to like uh, whatever you want, faux finish brushes or natural brushes too. You can click that and hit append and it'll just kind of add some brushes and things like that to, to what you've got there. So just kind of play around with that and you're gonna come across you know, all kinds of little like scattery brushes and things like this. Um, basically just choose some things that look like a relatively random pattern. So something, something like this. Now if you choose a brush and it just happens to look something like that. Don't, don't necessarily worry about that. That's not a big deal, um, especially at this point, because we're going to go up here to our brush window, and we're going to continue to edit this brush. So I'll, I'll show you guys how to just mess with this one. I am using a Wacom tablet, which makes this a lot, a lot better. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing something like this just with a mouse. So I'm going to click on this transfer button, and what this is going to do is I'm going to click on my flow jitter, bring this all the way down, but I'm going to bring pen pressure now to kind of just show my transfer. So the harder I press, the more I'm going to put down, and the softer I press, the less I'm going to put down. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to, on. you can use your background layer or here on a new layer or something like that. I'm just kind of like playing around um, with all kinds of just different shapes here, and I'm looking to create something, you know, relatively random is, is basically my end goal. Random and kind of scattered around. And I know it might not make sense, like why would you be doing that? Uh, when you're retouching skin. Um, well, skin is relatively random as well. So, you know, something like that looks pretty good. Why not? Um, so this is like a nice uh, background here. And again, have fun with this. Kind of create whatever it is that you want to create. Next, I'm going to turn on shape dynamics. We're going to turn size jitter on. Uh, turn our minimum diameter right up to about 20 or so. And angle jitter we want all the way up as well. There we go. And let's see what this does. I'm going to create a new layer and start painting in black. And we can see this channel just makes a bunch of those little shapes. I'm going to turn on scattering as well. There we go. And this is just going to scatter these things around. All right. So we're just kind of like got a small brush and we're scattering it around. Let's bring up our scattering just a little bit. And you can see a nice preview there of what you're actually going to be doing. There we go. And we'll just kind of paint this in there. Now, I don't want anything to be like too dense or, you know, I, I want everything to be about the same level here. I don't want like a black spot right there because it's going to make the brush just look a little bit less, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's just going to, you'll see when we actually are painting with this brush that it, it, it's going to make the brush not blend as well. All right, so just a random kind of scattering like that. And that looks pretty good, honestly. It, it doesn't really need to be better than that. So that's going to define our brush shape. So to get that um, how we want it, we're going to go to edit and then down here to define brush preset. So define brush preset and we'll just call this uh, scatter. 
There we go. Now I'm going to hit enter. You can right click and go all the way down to your latest brush. There we go. And that's going to be your scatter brush. So you can see it now I can actually paint with this scatter brush. Now I'm going to go back to my other window here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. We've got our scatter brush and you can see I can just kind of paint around with this. But now we're going to take this brush and edit it a little bit more. So we're going to go back to our brush menu. I'm going to turn on our shape dynamics. We're going to turn on our size jitter and our minimum diameter just like we did before. I'm going to turn this transfer on just like we did before as well. There we go. So we can see it's just kind of like getting a little bit more random. We're going to turn on our scattering and we'll just bring that down right to about there. All right. So we're get some, getting something that just kind of like looks pretty random. I'm going to hold alt or option and just kind of sample some colors here and see how this works. You can change your flow. I'd recommend choosing a flow of, you know, anywhere from like 20 to 40 percent. And uh, the goal here is, there we go, let me just zoom in, is to get something that doesn't really look like it was done in Photoshop. And it's got quite a bit of detail here because we did use a relatively large brush size when we created that 800 by 800. So it's got a bunch of detail here and um, it, it just kind of like comes across as something that doesn't look quite as Photoshop-y, especially when you, when you use this. Um, the more and more you use this sort of thing, it's going to be, get better and better. All right, there we are. Cool. So we've got a kind of a, just a random brush there and uh, looks pretty, looks good. This is going to be really nice for retouching. All right, let's bring our minimum diameter up to about 40. Great, there we go. So I'm going to hit Command A, just hit delete and uh, we're going to delete that. So this is the brush that we want. I'm going to just click right here on this uh, little new page icon and we're going to call this um, retouch brush. And you know, you, there's really no rule when you guys are doing this sort of thing. You just paint whatever you want. But basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, sampling colors from Ace's face and then painting them in. So our goal here, uh, we're going to paint, you know, maybe at about 20 to 30 percent flow. I'm going to sample some colors and just kind of paint these in. And what my goal is to just kind of like skin or to smooth his skin. So I'm not necessarily trying to um, there we go. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm just kind of working on smoothing out what's already there. And as I paint on here, you can see that his skin is kind of like starting to smooth itself a little bit better. And that's the whole goal here is to try to make to try to make skin smoothing just a little bit easier. And this paint, let me just use my move tool. This is basically what I'm painting. And you can see right here on his skin, you can see the before and after what a what a difference it's making there. So as I'm painting, all I'm doing is I'm holding Alt or Option, I'm sampling a point and kind of painting it in. All right, and you can change your brush size as you're going along as well here. Just make your brush a little bit smaller in the areas that um, are, you know, like smaller areas like around here. You just make your brush a little bit smaller. And the reason why I created this brush being, you know, just instead of like a soft round brush, it has texture built into it already. So it makes, especially when you're doing face retouching and things like that, it just, it's going to make it a little bit less like, you know, Photoshop-y looking. Uh, it'll, it'll bring some texture of its own. Now, I realize just using a brush tool over someone's face is going to destroy the skin texture of their face. I'm totally aware of that. Uh, but it's not a big deal. I'm going to show you guys how to get it back in just a second here. There we go. So I'm just holding Alt or Option and sampling and painting right over Ace's face here. Now this is something that you'll want to practice. I make this look pretty easy. It's really not that hard, but it, it does require some practice. This is not something that I would recommend you just kind of like, um, you know, spend two minutes on with, with your average photo. This is because you, you really do have the op opportunity here to uh, make someone look really weird. <laughs> This is a great tool. It's a powerful tool and you can make someone, you know, you can make people look a little bit better, but just as easily you can make them look a lot worse. So just keep that in mind as you go along. All right. And we're just kind of painting this in here. I'm just choosing areas that maybe are just a little too light or a little too dark and uh, kind of evening everything out. So there's no real rule here. It's just, does it look like it needs to be lighter or darker? And then I'm sampling the colors that are right around it and kind of painting those in. 
All right, and if an area doesn't look great, like this area that I just painted right there, doesn't look that great, all I'm gonna do is grab my eraser tool and just erase away a little bit. All right, because we're not perfect. We make mistakes all the time. I do. All right, there we go. So we're just kind of like painting this in. Not too bad, and um, you don't want to be too close zoomed in when you're working on a person like this because it, it'll kind of, it'll not really allow you to see the big picture. And especially when we're doing this sort of retouching, the big picture is really important. All right, let's bring his cheek down a little bit. There we go. So we can see we're retouching, but we still have this texture because the texture that we're painting with is inherent in the brush that we're building, that we, that we just built. Now there still is a little bit of skin texture, like on the small, you know, minute level that we're missing, but I'm gonna show you guys how to add that back right over top of what we're painting here. And you can just kind of have fun with this, like go, you know, just do this for a little while. It is kind of fun. Just see what you can do with a person's face. I like it anyway, but I like weird things. So I can't assume that you guys will like it, but it seems like you might. All right, so there's a before and after. Again, not a whole lot of time spent in that, and uh, you can see it, it really does help. There's no detail there left in, um, left in the actual skin pores because I'm, I'm painting right over it. I know that there's no detail. Um, but again, not a big deal. So almost done here. You can go over you know, neck areas and things like that. Um, and this, this is totally you know, just kind of bonus at this point. Just pay more attention with the, with the face. That's my recommendation. Okay, there we go. So how do we make this look real? Well, first thing I wanna do, let's go ahead and make this layer invisible. I'm gonna duplicate my background layer. So I'm gonna hit Command J on the background layer and Command close bracket to bring that to the top. And we're gonna hit Shift Command U to desaturate because we're about to bring in a sharpening and we don't want it to sharpen color as well. So we're gonna make this layer visible now. So we've got this layer visible and we've got this layer one copy visible. We're gonna use a clipping mask, which makes layer one copy only visible where this layer two is visible. So option command G is your keyboard shortcut for that, clipping mask. You can also right click and go to create clipping mask. Uh, we have plenty of episodes on clipping masks. Just, there's a tag on flirt.com where it says clipping masks. Just click on that, you'll be able to see how to use clipping masks. So that's really nice, but it just looks incredibly weird right now, it looks horrible. So what we're gonna do is change this layer from normal down here to overlay which is gonna overlay that skin texture on the skin, but I need a way to separate out the lights and the darks. I just want the midtones, which is gonna give me the detail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to filter, we're gonna to go to other, and then down here to high pass. Now here in the high pass filter, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a radius that gives us our skin back. So as I click on here and just drag from the left to the right, well, somewhere around, you know, around here, we're gonna get our detail in our skin back. And the reason I'm doing this step in this, um, in this order is now I can actually see the skin detail as it's coming in. Like here I can see, nah, that doesn't look as good. Kind of like a dodge and burn kind of thing. Doesn't look horrible, really. Um, you know, down here, you don't, we don't see a ton. So something like that, I think looks pretty good. The detail's coming back, and I'm gonna hit okay and see what we've got. So there we go, our detail's coming back. So why would I do all that? Let's just command click and see the before and the after with that. So what's really nice here is we're able to, sorry about that, we're able to see the difference that we can make in someone's skin. Let's even, I'm gonna take this a step further. Let's just do a high pass filter, but let's go a little bit lower so it doesn't bring back as much of the uh, light and dark. There we go, we're, let's group those. So we can see the before and the after. You can still see the detail there I'm just zoom in so you could believe me. Um, this is, without that, I'm just painted on with a brush tool, and then this just adds the detail right back over top of it. So we've got the detail, but it's still allowing us that nice retouch as well. So let's just see the before and the after at this level, and we can see, it's just like, oh, cool. That's a nice, you know, just kind of like retouched face. It doesn't look fake, and all the detail is still there, which is just a really, really nice way to do these things. Um, so that's, that's a lot of what we would want to do with someone's face. Now there's a couple more things that I'm going to show you guys how to do and uh, then we're going to move on to section two. So this is a, 
Also an area right here on the top of his head. I'm going to right click. Let's just use the same old brush that we just created here. Um, there we go. This is our the retouch brush or whatever you want to call it. And um, what I'm going to do, let's make a stamp visible layer. So shift option command E for a stamp visible. Then I'm going to hit S for my clone stamp tool. Let's just choose that same brush that we were going to create, which is called editorial retouch brush. So clone stamp, sorry, I'm on a stamp visible layer. I'm going to grab my clone stamp. Here on my sample, I'm going to hit the current and below layer. And if I clone stamp from one area to another, it's just going to fill in some more hair, which is nice. But I also have the option to change my blending mode of my brush. Now, I'm not changing my blending mode of my layer, just my brush here from normal down to darken. So when I clone stamp here, let's just say I clone stamp outside of there, something like that, it's only darkening things. It's not going to lighten anything. So when I do this inside of his head, what it's going to actually do is it's going to allow me to clone stamp areas, making them a little bit darker. And I'm able to basically like fill in some hair things like that if, if this is something you guys wanted to do. So you can fill in hair and um, I would just recommend you know keeping it keeping it visible like sampling pretty close to where you actually want to paint and uh, this is going to just paint in that hair. You can also use uh, multiply as a blending mode. Oh sorry you don't want to change your layer blend mask. You can use multiply as a blending mode right there on your um, clone stamp tool but it's going to get it's going to get pretty dark pretty fast. So I'm just going to use darken. There we go. And you can just kind of like darken this sort of thing in. All right. And what this literally does is just kind of like fills in some hair. All right. Now, I don't know if I'm going to actually wind up liking this or not. <laughs> but you can, this is a great technique for filling in and things like that. All right. If you don't want to use this method, you can also create a custom brush and paint in hair. All right. Yeah, that really doesn't look that natural. Let's just use a brush tool here. Um, one of the reasons is it's kind of colored a little bit much, so I'm going to hit Command U and just bring down our saturation on that whole layer just a little bit. Let's put a layer mask on there. I'm going to hit Command I on my layer mask, and then we can just paint white back in where we actually want it to be visible. All right, so that area up there and then down here as well. All right, that looks pretty good. So not a whole lot of time, guys, and you can see really quick, here's the before and the after. So that's step one of our, uh, of our retouch. Looking pretty good, and uh, step two is going to be really cool as well. Thanks so much for watching, Florin. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it makes every single photo you ever take even better. I'll Florin you later. Bye, everyone. Hi guys, Kat from Flirn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flirn.com. Also check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter, because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.